has become an incredibly popular city for relocation. It's got a unique culture and a vibe that you really can't find anywhere else in the Triangle. In today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into Durham's history and see how it grew into the city that it is today. And we're going to look at a lot of the things that set it apart from other cities in the Triangle. is weird. Here's an example. In other Triangle cities, grocery stores are luxurious. They tend to be big chain stores like Harris Teeter, Wegmans, Lowe's Foods, Whole Foods, as well as trendy discount stores with big followings like Trader Joe's, Aldi, and Lidl. But most of the stores are not like this in Durham. There's one Whole Foods and several Food Lions and Harris Teeters, but mostly what you have are stores you've never heard of. You've got trendy little independent grocers like the Durham Market Co-op and the Bodega Urban Market. You've also got much lesser known family-owned chain markets like Compare Foods, Foods and King's Red and White. These stores look like you've stepped back in time about 50 years, but if you read through the reviews, you'll see gold. King's makes their own jams, butters, and marmalades, and everyone comments on how clean the stores are and how fresh the food is. And if you think about it, grocery stores must spend a fortune on cosmetic updates. What these stores save on that, they make up for in price and culture. One reviewer said it like this, I bought candied fruit last week for $7.29 at Food Lion. King's charged $2.29, a lot cheaper in a lot of things and wonderful local fruits and vegetables. It might seem weird to start a video with grocery stores, but I feel like this kind of sums up the unique character of Durham. Do you want to talk to me on camera about living in Durham? Uh, well, <laughs> I love Durham. What do you, what do you yeah. oh, So you live here in Durham? Yes, ma'am. Uh, how long have you lived here? I'm 55, so I've been here 55 years. 55 <laughs> years, amazing. It's changed a lot in 55 years. It's a lot. Yes, ma'am, it has. Let's look at a little history and see how they got to where they are now. According to bestplaces.net, Durham falls below the national average for affordability, ranking at 97.5, with 100 being the average. It's important to keep in mind that the average takes into account all of the U.S., even places like Wyoming, Montana, and the Dakotas, which average around 10 people per square mile. For comparison's sake, Durham has about 26 600 people per square mile. Those places with very few people are much cheaper to live in, so just keep in mind that those national averages include those places. When you take this into consideration, Durham is pretty cheap, and a lot of people are moving to Durham because it's so, so affordable, especially compared to the places they're moving from. With the exception of Fayetteville, North Carolina, they're all big cities. Washington, D.C., San Francisco, New York, L.A., Boston, Chicago, Seattle, Austin, and San Diego. At the time of this video, the median home price in Durham was $400,000. The culture and community in Durham are shaped quite a bit by three things. Durham's history as a tobacco town, Duke University, and Research Triangle Park. Today, Durham is known as the city of medicine thanks to the many healthcare and research institutions that call Durham home. The Duke University health system is today the largest employer in the city, but before Durham was an academic research center, it was dominated by the tobacco industry. And you can see a lot of this history and so many of the cool things that give Durham an authentic feel. After the Civil War, the success of the Bull Durham Tobacco Company and W. Duke & Sons Tobacco propelled the growth of Durham. When W. Duke & Sons was broken up by federal antitrust laws before World War I, the Duke family turned their attention to the growing industry of electricity production. By establishing Duke Power and bringing electricity to Durham, textile mills moved in and doubled the growing population of Durham. Eventually, those tobacco and textile industries faded, but they left behind the building infrastructure that is now being revitalized into a thriving downtown with the American Tobacco Historic District, the Durham Bulls Athletic Park and DPAC, the Durham Performing Arts Center. It's also this history that gave the city its nickname, the Bull City. Duke University University is a prestigious world-class university that's considered one of the Ivies of the South. Duke has had a significant impact on Durham and its growth historically, and you still feel that impact today in the innovation and entrepreneurial spirit of the modern day life in Durham. Washington Duke, who founded Duke University's initial endowment, was a business mentor to black entrepreneur John Merrick. Merrick was born just before the Civil War, so this was an unusual business relationship indeed. It isn't surprising that Durham has been a breeding ground for creative startups. Duke was also a financial supporter of NCCU, Durham's historically black college. Research Triangle Park, known as RTP, is a 7,000 acre business park in Durham and the largest high-tech research and development park in the United States. RTP was founded after World War II when the economic health of the area was in decline. The economy had been founded upon agriculture, textiles, and furniture, and it was apparent that these industries were no longer enough to support the changing world. Academics from Duke and NC State created the Innovation Park at the center of the triangle surrounding the three universities, Duke University, NC State, and Chapel Hill, 
RTP has become the backbone of the entire Triangle region, not just Durham. Durham's economy is strong and job prospects are abundant, which makes moving to Durham a little easier. RTP is home to over 300 companies, primarily technology and biotech, but technology isn't the only industry in Durham. Because Duke is a major medical research school, Duke University Hospital employs over 11,000 people, and the university itself provides employment for 400 academic staff and 8,400 administrative staff. Other major employers are companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield North Carolina with 4,800 employees, Wolf Speed Semiconductor Manufacturer, and finance companies like Fidelity Investments. No wonder college is so expensive. They have hardly any teachers. It's all administrators. What in the same don't put this on the video. In addition to the excellent universities, Durham has some high-ranking K-12 schools. Magnet schools include the City of Medicine Academy, Durham School of the Arts, Middle College High School at Durham Tech, J.D. Clement Early College High School, Lakewood Montessori Middle, and Pearsontown Elementary. Popular K-12 private schools are Durham Academy, Trinity School of Durham, and Carolina Friends School. I find the most interesting school a K-8 school called the Duke School. It was founded as a project-based lab school for the Departments of Psychology and Education at Duke University but eventually became an independent school, which it remains today. When you think about the weather in Durham, you have to realize that weather is all relative. If you're moving to Durham from Southern California, where the weather is fit for Barbie dolls and Hollywood stars, weather in Durham might seem a tad humid, but don't worry, it doesn't last very long. If you're moving to Durham from the cold, dark north, as I like to call it, you can retire your snow shovel because you won't be needing it until that day that you do need it. And then you'll drive to Lowe's to get a snow shovel, but they'll be all sold out because every other northerner left theirs up north as well. So keep your snow shovel. You might need it once every 20 years. We do have hot, humid summers in Durham, but what exactly does that mean? So how long have you lived in Durham? Just 10 years. Where'd you come from? Uh, Dallas. What is the heat in the, the summertime like here? A lot of people are worried that it's oppressive and hot. I'm like, <laughs> What? To me, it's a shorter season than it ever was in Texas. Basically, it's part of July and get through August, and if you can get through that six weeks, then... In my opinion, the heat and humidity get uncomfortable in July, and that lasts until about mid-September when you start to get your first low humidity days. Having said that, I lived for a year in Houston, and North Carolina heat is nothing like Houston heat. Remember when you were a kid and you would burn leaves outside with a magnifying glass? No, just me? Anyway, Texas summer feels like you're the leaf. North Carolina is not even close to that. It does get hot, but even with the heat, moving to Durham is absolutely worth it because if you wait just a minute, October is stunning with low humidity, vibrant blue skies, and gorgeous autumn color on the trees. If you're not sure if you can handle the heat in summer, July and August are a great time to visit to see Durham at its worst. Just keep in mind that you do acclimate to different types of weather. I used to hate the cold winters because I grew up in Florida. After 22 years, I absolutely love winter, love the cold, and never feel uncomfortable in winter anymore. Part of that was adjusting to it by buying the right clothing. Just realize that there's an acclimation period and one visit might not tell you everything you need to know. Winter in Durham is very mild compared to just about anywhere except the few states to our south, but even at that we get virtually no winter precipitation. Snow is rare, what we do get is ice or sleet or freezing rain. And these types of things are much more slippery than snow, so when we get ice the roads are usually shut down. This might happen once or maybe twice in a typical winter. You can count on having at least one day of recommendations to stay off the road. And all you people who move here from heavy snow areas that think you can drive on the ice will probably end up in a ditch somewhere off I-40. But you had, isn't this a four-wheel drive car? It ain't doing anything but get me stuck. You think you can do these things, Nemo, but you just can't. Please stay home when the news tells you to stay home. We can get temperatures into the 60s on occasion throughout winter, and most people do continue to get outdoors on our beautiful greenways and parks throughout the winter months. But after winter comes spring, and for those of you who don't come from areas with seasons, the trees actually turn pink, like a Dr. Seuss book. It's amazing, at least to someone who grew up in Florida, it is. Like all the other areas in the Triangle, living in Durham puts you in close proximity to both the North Carolina beaches and the mountains. It's less than two and a half hours to Wrightsville Beach and about three hours to Beaufort where the wild horses live on Shackleford Banks. You're less than two hours from Hanging Rock State Park, and if you really need mountains, just another 30 to 40 minutes will get you to Boone and all the mountain activities from hiking to skiing that surround Boone. But if you want to stay closer to home, Durham has you covered with the Eno River State Park and the American Tobacco Trail. The Eno River State Park is just 15 minutes outside of downtown Durham. Not only can you go camping over the weekend, you can hike the trails and enjoy the quiet serenity of the river without giving up your whole day. The American Tobacco Trail is a 22-mile mixed-use trail running from Durham south into 
into Chatham and Wake counties. Walkers, runners, bicyclists, and equestrians all use the American Tobacco Trail year-round to enjoy great North Carolina weather. You're also only 20 minutes from both Falls Lake and Jordan Lake, whether you're looking to hike, bike, fish, sail, Durham puts you in the middle of everything. And I almost forgot the Sarah P. Duke Gardens. This public garden was established over 80 years ago and it encompasses 55 acres with five miles of trails within the park. Admission is free, but parking is not. It's $2 an hour to park. Like the wilderness I like this I wouldn't want to live next to a big wild park where you can go hiking I would want to live next to the most amazing garden and I would spend every single day here every year the National Good Food Awards judges restaurants across the US in categories such as cheese chocolate coffee desserts really just about everything you can imagine eating Durham won more awards than any other city or town in the Triangle they won more than Raleigh Charlotte Asheville and even Washington DC full steam brewery won for their common good malt Valley Brook Farms won for their their bread and butter pickle chips and their brandied peach jam and the spicy hermit one for their butternut squash kimchi. Apparently Durham is big into fermentation, which is pretty cool. I wonder who's got the best sourdough. But if you're looking for iconic Durham food, you need to check out Dame's Chicken and Waffles. You can't go to Durham without visiting it. And if you're looking for all the best Durham restaurants, don't miss Amber Watson's incredible food blog. Is the technical name for a food blog a flog? That just sounds wrong. I'm not sure, but if you're looking for great food, you'll find it at Bites of Bull City. Durham is home to two world-famous sport teams. The Duke University Blue Devils men's basketball team has fans and haters across the country. With its long history of success, some of the very best high school recruits from across the country come to play in the famous Cameron Indoor Stadium. Virginia has come into Cameron and knocked off the number seven team in the country, 69 to 68. Sports Illustrated put the stadium at the number four spot on its list of top 20 sporting venues in the 20th century. It's small, so if you want to attend one of the rivalry games, you're going to have to wait in a long line. The Tobacco Road rivalries between Duke, UNC, Chapel Hill, and NC State are a big deal here. The Durham Bulls minor league baseball team was made famous in the 1988 movie Bull Durham, starring Kevin Costner and Susan Sarandon. I want you to throw the next one at the mascot. Why? I'm finally throwing it where I want to throw it. Just throw it at the bull, huh? Right? Trust me. The Bulls are a family staple in Durham with many theme nights catering to kids. The new Durham Bull Stadium was built right in the middle of downtown, so a night out at the game can be easily followed by dinner in one of Durham's fabulous restaurants. Of course, both Duke and North Carolina Central University in town, college sports aren't limited to Blue Devil basketball. If you need a major league sports team, the Carolina Hurricanes live nearby in Raleigh. Right in front for Stastny and he scores. Durham is known for its music and art scene. The entire Triangle travels to Durham for DPAC, the premier Triangle Area Performing Arts Center in the region, welcoming artists from around the world as well as touring Broadway productions. Throughout the summer, there are free performances at the American Tobacco Campus, Streets of South Point, Duke Gardens, Brightleaf Square, and Durham Central Park. There are numerous festivals that take place throughout Durham, like the Festival for the Eno and the Durham Blues and Brews Fest. There are a couple of major shopping centers in Durham. Briar Creek is the biggest one, and it sits right on the border of Raleigh and Durham near the airport. This is one of those shopping areas where everything is mixed use, so there's a decent amount of housing here. There are actually about 20,000 people that live in Briar Creek, and this is where you can find all your big box stores and tons of restaurants. The streets of South Point is in South Durham, and it's also a mixed use shopping center. It has a lot of the same big box stores as Briar Creek, but it also has a mall. The South Point Mall is probably the best mall in the whole Triangle area as well, if you want really good stores, you come here. It's the only shopping area that has a Nordstrom in the Triangle as well, and South Point is just north of RTP, so this is a great area to live in if you're going to be commuting to RTP for work. You got to look at it when you wake up every day and you're healthy, you breathe, you come to work. It's really nothing bad. Yeah. My philosophy, if I wake up every day, every day is a great day. Y'all enjoy it. Well, thank you so Have much. Have a blessed thank day. You, you too. Right. If you like this video, you might also like this one where I compare Raleigh to Durham.